Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.18, an Eagle Dynamics FA-18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 18, SA Page. The Hornet has quite good sensor fusion, uh, where it takes information from the radar, IFF, forward-looking infrared, data link, RWR, and various other sources, uh, and builds uh, track files and, and contact information based on data from multiple sensor sources. And one of the primary ways of displaying this is the SA page, although this information is also displayed in the helmet-mounted display, and in the attack radar, and in the azimuth elevation display, among other places. Today we're going to take a little look at the SA page and how it's used. So let's uh, jump into the cockpit and let's go heads down. Uh, I'm going to display the SA page on the MPCD, the center display, which is the default uh, for working with the SA page. Uh, right now you can see that I've got the HSI up, which is the default. Uh, if I come out of pause here, I can press sensor select switch aft and you'll see that I get my diamond at the top right as normal. If I press it again, sensor select switch aft that is, it will then flip between SA page, which is now what I'm displaying, and the HSI. This is a very quick way of flipping between the two. Now the, the HSI and the SA page are used in a very similar fashion to the TSD in the Apache's two modes of navigation and attack. The HSI is primarily used for navigation, as you might have guessed, uh, and the SA page is used when you're in an attack mode or a more tactical mode. So um, another way, of course, of bringing up is just pressing menu and then selecting SA. Uh, and when you do that, we actually we don't have it sensor of interest. Let's press sensor select switch aft. It's now sensor of interest. We've got the cursor inside the display and we can move the cursor around. Let's go ahead and pause just now, and we're going to go over all of the symbology and controls on this display. So uh, by default, the representation is pretty much exactly the same as what you see in the HSI, the difference being that the primary information that's displaying is not navigational, so it's not waypoints, uh, TACAN, and such like. It's primarily displaying information with regards to tracks uh, and information derived from uh, your various sensors. So in this particular instance, we can see uh, that we have these yellow uh, HAFU symbols. If I actually, I'm gonna zoom right down on these so that we can get as good a view as possible on uh, this symbology. Uh, now the HAFU, as, as always, is uh, hostile, ambiguous, friendly, and unknown. Uh, what we have here is we have the two halves of the HAFU. Uh, now I've demonstrated the attack radar and the azimuth and elevation display with HAFU symbols previously, uh, and previously we were only seeing the top halves of these symbols. This is the first time in my tutorial series that we're seeing both halves. So what you need to know about these symbols is they're split, um, and the top half is what's called own ship, um, so that's, uh, or on, on board you could say, um, so that's onboard identification, so that's what our radar uh, sees, and the bottom half is offboard, and that means the information that we've been sent over the data link, and this could be via uh, fighter, uh, fighter to fighter data link, or it could be via surveillance data link, which is what we get from AWACS aircraft. So, uh, what are we seeing here? We've got two groups, two four ships uh, left and right of us here, and in front of us we have a two ship. Um, so if we look at these, this is a thin staple on top. That means that we can see this target via our radar and that it's currently unknown. We have no idea what this is. So we've not done NCTR and we've not done IFF to identify it ourselves. And it's showing as yellow and that's confirmation again that it's either ambiguous or unknown. Bottom half of the symbol is half of a diamond uh, and diamond means hostile. So we're getting information over the data link that these are hostile tracks. And then with this two ship here, again, top half ambiguous. Our own aircraft does not know what these are. Bottom half is a half circle. That tells us it's friendly, or at least that's the information we're getting from the data link. In addition, um, around the compass rows around the outside, we get information from the RWR. By default, we're only seeing the top four contacts, uh, and we can see these triangles with 29s inside them. That means that these are MiG-29 RWR contacts, and you can see they're in line 
with these two groups. So we can be fairly certain that these two groups of aircraft are MiG-29s. Down here, uh, you actually can't see the full symbol, but we have a full circle, which means that both our onboard sensors and the offboard data that we're getting say that this is a friendly aircraft. It has a dot inside it, which lets us know that it's contributing um, to the surveillance data link. And then we also have this circle here, very, very close to us, with a B inside it. Um, friendlies with letters inside them are flight members. So this aircraft down here, I know that this is an AWACS. This is simply a friendly aircraft that's on the Link 16 network. Uh, this aircraft, however, is uh, my wingman. So B for uh, number two in the formation. And he has a dot on the side. That means that he's a fighter to fighter um, data link contributor. So we're also getting data link information from him. Um, so that's basically everything that's displayed on the, the tracks just now. Um, normally you would also see information about um, threat rings from surface to air missile systems. I don't have any in this mission, uh, but uh, those the thing to note about those is that they come from the DTC, so that information is static. Um, so even after you destroy a target or it turns off its radar, it will continue to appear on the SA page because the system doesn't know that that emitter is now no longer there. Those display a number which will identify the type, you know, two for SA2, three for SA3, etc. And there'll be a dotted circle around it showing you the expected uh, engagement radius. So basically you should stay out of that. Next, let's take a little look at the controls. Uh, across the top, we have controls to display the map. It notes that just as with the HSI, the map will only display at zoom levels that you have symbology for. You can declutter, and there are various declutter settings. I'll go over the, them in a moment. There's scale. Scale can be flipped from 160 to 5 miles uh, in increments. MK1 is to drop a mark point. And decenter will shift the display so that your own ship, which is this cross here, is at the bottom of the display and you can see more forwards. Uh, you've then got the same controls down the right hand side that you have on the HSI. So I can enable waypoint navigation, I can toggle up and down through my waypoints, I can waypoint designate, and I can choose what sequence I'm working with. Uh, in other words, what flight plan. So I'm currently on sequence one. If I clicked this, it would box sequence one and actually display. Uh, my flight plan on the display is a dotted line, and then I go to sequence 2, sequence 2 boxed, sequence 3, sequence 3 boxed, and then back to sequence 1. Uh, and auto simply enables the auto sequencing that you have in the HSI as well. I'm gonna, actually going to turn that off. And by default it turns on the sequence as well. I'm going to pause again so that we're not moving too far. Uh, transmit designate uh, means that if... Um, someone on PPLI, now PPLI stands for Precise Participant Location and Identification, uh, if someone on PPLI locks up an enemy, uh, or actually locks up anything, uh, either air to air or air to ground, we will get a dotted line from them to a target. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Step allows us to step through the different track files that we currently have on the SA page in order of priority. Let's just demonstrate that quickly. If I hit step, it's going to go to my highest priority or my lock and steering target. Let's uh, again pause very quickly and we can take a look at this symbology. We get a box around the current uh, target. Left hand side we have its Mach. This aircraft is at Mach 0.7. Right hand side we have altitude and angels. They're currently 20,000 feet. And in bottom right we get the data block. So data block is a uh, top line is identification from NCTR. So I'm getting MiG-29. Uh, below that, I have ground speed and heading. So he's got a ground speed of 430 knots. He's heading 274 degrees. And that's also confirmed by the stem on his symbol. And then we have the bra. So from, from us, he is bearing range and altitude. So well, in this case, just bearing in range because the altitude is here. He's 029er, 16 miles from my own aircraft and I could continue to click step and I would go through all of the aircraft. Something to note, uh, PPLI aircraft have a whole bunch of extra information. Let's quickly uh, demonstrate that. I'm gonna step through all of these and there we go, there's my, there's my wingman. So uh, on my wingman, I've got the same top line. So FA-18, I have his identification, that is another FA-18. I kind of I knew that because he was my wingman. But then below we have his call sign, he's Dodge-12. Uh, we have his fuel state, he's 10.8, that's 10,800 pounds of fuel, and then his bra. 
Uh, something else to note is that if you have a bullseye, I don't currently have a bullseye turned on, you'll get bullseye information as well. Let me very quickly demonstrate that. I'm going to go sensor select, switch aft. I'm now on the HSI page. I've got waypoint one. I'm going to go data, air to air waypoint, go back to HSI, sensor select, switch aft. I'm now back to the SA page. I'm going to pause again, and I've now got a bottom line that is BE, that's for bullseye. So here is bullseye 174 for 45 miles. Uh, bottom left, we have uh, information about our um, countermeasures. I have 60 chaff, 60 flares, none of decoy type 1, none of decoy type 2. They're not implemented as yet. And then we have the EXP. EXP is active whenever we have a stepped target or whenever we have our cursor over a target. And if I unpause, pressing EXP will give us a zoomed in view of that target. It'll be centered on that target uh, and it's a five nautical mile scale in this mode. Pressing EXP takes me out again. If I move my cursor, I leave step mode automatically. I can move my cursor over one of these MIGs, press EXP. Oops, I lost him. Let's try it again. EXP. Interesting. Maybe it's easier if I'm on step. Okay, I've got one of these on step. Let's EXP. There we go. There's a zoomed in view and we have the priority numbers here as well. Priority 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and I can continue to step and it will take me out of EXP mode or I can move the cursor and it also takes me out of EXP mode. We then have sensor filter at the top left. If I press sensor, and I'm going to pause again, because I don't want these targets to move out of my field of view, I can control what information the SA page is displaying. Uh, we can hide or display information from Blink 4, that's currently not implemented. We can display or hide information from the FLIR. Uh, at present, it really that, that is implemented, but it really just shows you where your FLIR is currently looking. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Uh, you can uh, display or hide information from HARM, currently not implemented. Uh, there's OCS1 and OCS2, also not implemented. Uh, there's the fighter to fighter data link. Let me show what happens when I turn that off. Uh, when I turn that off, if any of these targets were coming to me from my wingman's radar, I would lose them. Uh, that's what that does. PPLI disables PPLI information. So I still know where my wingman is. He's still showing up here as a friendly symbol, but that information is now coming from surveillance data link from the AWACS. So I know he's a friendly, but I no longer have all the PPLI information, like his call sign, fuel state, which, uh, you know, his letter, uh, and so on. So let's turn PPLI back on, and then immediately he shows up as my wingman symbol again. Uh, note that PPLI is higher refresh, so uh, he, he will show up as a very precise location and updated regularly. And then there's surveillance. If I turn surveillance off, I will lose all the surveillance data over the data link. You'll notice that I only have the top halves of these hafus, the information that I'm getting from my own radar. If I turn surveillance back on, after a short delay, I will get the bottom halves again. Uh, although in saying that, I don't seem to be getting anything. I wonder if my AWACS can't see these targets anymore. Uh, and then across the top, we can show or hide information from IFF, currently not implemented. We can control what, in, what RWR information we get. We can get all, although it's limited to the top four. We can get critical and lethal, only critical. We can have RWR off, or we can bring it back to all. By default, RWR uh, returns which we know are friendlies are off. I can tell it to show them, but with no ID, or I can show it with an RWR ID. So, for example, 18 might show up on my RWR if my wingman was to turn towards me. And let's turn it back off. Uh, this controls whether or not unknown RWR contacts should be displayed. Oh wait, no, that's not unknown. That's uh, whether or not unknown tracks should be displayed, sorry. Uh, and then pressing SA takes us back to the normal SA page. Something else to note is that if I have stepped over uh, a target or I move my cursor over it, there's the option for PLID. Uh, so that's uh, that allows me to set what I believe this target is. Friendly, hostile, or unknown. Um, I am quite certain because of NCTR and other information I have that this is hostile. So I'm going to select hostile. Uh, I'm actually I'm going to step over these and expand in so this is easier. PLID hostile step PLID hostile step PLID hostile. Uh, I don't seem to have all of them. 
Kill ID hostile. Kill ID hostile. For some reason, it's not updating all of them. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. Um, am I not doing this correctly? Oh, no, there we go. Uh, I hadn't stepped correctly over all of them. That's what the problem was. So I want this guy, PLID, hostile. And you'll see that um, f for a few of these, that's actually confirmed by AWACS. And so now they're showing in red. And we have complete diamonds, top and bottom halves. So that's all working as intended. Uh, let's change my scale so that I can see everybody that we've got here. Uh, other symbology that we have here is this little box with the dot is where my FLIR is looking. That's my FLIR information. Uh, this uh, circle with the number one is my waypoint number one. And he has this bigger circle with an arrow pointing to north because it's also my bullseye. So I've got bullseye information showing up there as well. So uh, let's demonstrate what it looks like when my wingman attacks someone. Because we'll then see the transmit designate information. Let's go uh, wingman 2, engage bandits. There we go. Dotted line shows that he's locked up this target. Bottom uh, half of the Hafu says that that's an off-board target, so I'm getting that over the data link, but my radar is not seeing it right now. Uh, if I was to go to sensors and disable fighter-to-fighter uh, -fighter data link, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to see that target, although I would still know that he's locking something up in that area. If I turn FF back on, I get information from the fighter fighter data link so this is actually not on the surveillance radar this AWACS aircraft is too far away he's not seeing these targets anymore I could turn off the surveillance track and I'm only losing the information that I'm getting over the data link about these friendlies if I turn that back on I now know that these are friendlies and actually just to be just to be complete let's say that we believe that this is indeed a friendly let's go PLID friend PLID friend uh not quite getting it. Let's step. There we go. Expand. Move my cursor down to this guy. PLID friend. And over the data link, I can see it's an unknown type. I don't know his ground speed uh, and his uh, heading right now for some reason, but I've got a bra and a bullseye to those two targets. Let's come out of expanded. Okay, my wingman is off to do his thing there. So uh, that is basically all of the information there that you have uh, with regards to the uh, the SA page. Actually, one last thing to note is this dot. You'll notice that I've got a dot in the middle here. Dot means that this contact is coming from the fighter-to-fighter -fighter data link. That's a, that's a way of telling without turning off FF. If there was no dot, that means it was coming from surveillance uh, or it was coming from my own aircraft. So one quick thing to note there. So, uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, also, if you would like to further support the channel, there is the option to join Deep Hacks Ground Crew. Uh, I'd like to give a big shout out just now to Channel Wright, Frantic Stone, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Pink Floyd, and Mangash. You're all currently members of Deep Hack's ground crew. Thank you so very much. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I'll see you all next time.